Hello, it's Lindsay Buse here. Just before Des and the team get started, we'd like to tell you about Podlytical. Whatever. It's breaking the news with Des Clark. <laughs> the news, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. A bingo hall in Fife has defended its decision to continue to play after a pensioner collapsed during a game. They did, however, admit it was probably insensitive to, at the end of the game, shout flat on the floor, 74. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton will be offered a new contract with Mercedes F1 team worth £60 million a year. Now, it may seem a lot, but after Lewis pays his tax, that leaves him £60 million a year. <laughs> Scottish unemployment fell by 14,000 to 96,000 in the three months leading up to December, according to official figures. That means as a percentage of the country, Scottish unemployment is down to an area about the size of Cope Bridge in Airdrie. <laughs> and by coincidence, it is actually Cope Bridge in Airdrie. <laughs> Joining me are regular guests Jim Smith and comedian Jay Lafferty, and facing them are stand-up Athena Cugbleno and funny man Raymond Mearns. <laughs> This is the Broken News Round, where our teams have to guess two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Jim and Jay, can you tell me the first story? The government says its new supercomputer won't be available for low-skilled workers. So would it help in the future if the First Minister was even more accurate? Ministers are urging Nicola Sturgeon to move away from Storm Dennis. So there we go. Two stories mashed together. What do we think about the first one? Jay? I think this is the kind of post-Brexit fallout. So since we were last on air, uh, Brexit has happened. <laughs> <laughs> A certain extent, and uh, so yesterday they kind of announced the Boris uh, Johnson's immigration plan, but it's not Boris Johnson's immigration plan, is it? It's Dominic Cummings' <laughs> plan, the Baldrick to Boris's black adder. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love this black adder analogy. I have a Cummings plan. Uh. <laughs> what about you, Jim? Brexit's finally happened, or has it? And now there's all the policies that are coming out that's going to deal with the aftermath of Brexit. Have you been keeping an eye and an ear over that? Absolutely. I'm a, a farmer from Blargowery. There's a lot of uh, berries, and uh, they're not going to be getting picked this year because there's nobody going to be there to pick the berries. You seem really sad about that, doesn't um, you? No, audience? it's true. In the audience want to pick Jim's berries. <laughs> 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 you can get cream for them if you want, Jim. <laughs> they're just going to be hanging out in the frost there. <laughs> Well, there you go. It is the story that there's a rash of new policies coming out of number 10. Since the UK left the EU at the end of January, we've had proposals for a bridge from Scotland to Northern Ireland. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. A bridge over the water to the Troubles. Aye. <laughs> So, Raymond Mearns, then, we've got a points-based system of immigration. 70 points or more need to be earned to get in here. All the policies coming out after Brexit. What's your take on it? You, you've, got, you've got two million long-term sick... So, Brexit Patel says, we're going to get all these economically inactive people. So, what happens is, this is great, because we need retail workers and farm workers. So, Jim, you're in luck. All the, all the, all the retired people and all the sick people <laughs> are going to be working on the farm. Right. <laughs> And you know what? The fresh air's going to be great for them. <laughs> and that takes care of the care workers, cos we'll no need them. <laughs> I think it's a perfect plan. Athena, the plans are out now for how immigration's going to work post-Brexit. 
Is this something that you've been excited about or perhaps a wee bit perturbed? I've been terrified. I came up to Scotland so they wouldn't put me on a plane, to be honest. (laughs) Um, I thought I could hide amongst this audience, but it looks like they'll find me very easily. Um, (laughs) Priti Patel has claimed anyone earning under 25k is unskilled. So first of all, I don't think the salary is the basis of how skilled you are. For instance, Priti Patel earns more than 25k. (laughs) She, she did an entire interview where she referred to terrorists as counter-terrorists. The whole way through the interview, that was a confusing moment for the IRA going, oh, is she on our side now? Is that what's happening? <laughs> what's a counter-terrorist anyway? Is that somebody going mad on a chip show? I don't know. <laughs> So post-Brexit and all the policies from the government, we know that's our first story. Athena, any ideas what the second story in the mashup is? This sounds like something to do with the horrific weather we've been having and this massive computer the Met Office are going to build? Yeah. Well, they've built it already? So, well, it's a thing that's going to predict the weather. So it just sounds like a really expensive window yeah. <laughs> that you can look out of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, is it a 1.2 billion Correct. pound window? So that hopefully you'll, you'll be able to open it. <laughs> and then, oh, it's hot. Yeah. Um, it, good. Uh, as the news, the UK, of course, has been battered for the past two weekends by Storm Kira and Storm Dennis, with more storms forecast for this weekend. The government has announced it is investing £1.2 billion in a weather supercomputer so we can better predict which areas need to check the flood cover in their insurance policies. Uh, Boris Johnson has promised £4.4 billion towards flood defences in England and Wales, and in Scotland he's offering a mop and a bucket and a canoe from Aldi. <laughs> Jay, what about you? First of all, these storms were you affected in any way? Uh, yes, I was. I had relatives coming to visit and the storm wasn't that bad where they were, so they still came. <laughs> 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 What's the point in having a superstorm if the relatives can still make it? It's just not any good. I-, I love the names they come up with as well, like Kira and Dennis. They just sound like that mental couple, don't they, that live down the street that argue at three o'clock in the morning because he's got a drinking problem and she won't let him see the wains, you know, that sort of thing. Jim, I don't know in terms of your life and work in the farm, do the storms have an impact there for you? Aye, the bull's looking miserable. Romance <laughs> 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 at all. There's not much happening out in the, 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 the cow shed. Uh, the now, the cows are fed up, the bull's miserable. It's, it's a it's a, drich, it's a drich time. It's a hard time. But, but this, this computer will solve everything. Cause it'll sort it out, won't it, Jim? The one, two billion pounds that'll, from folk will be going, uh, when they're going out and saying, uh, should I take a jacket? They'll now be saying, well, maybe I better take a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what about you? The supercomputer, does that excite you? Because in films, no one's ever made a supercomputer and it's turned out well, have they? It's just, it's just a big chance to take. I mean, I'm scared of Alexa. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> I was in the house one time and I accidentally called Alexa Siri and the next morning she woke me up at 6am. She's, <laughs> she's evil. <laughs> Raymond Mearns, what about you? Obviously, we're talking supercomputers to help predict and help the weather. Would there be a supercomputer we could build that would help you with something in your life? Maybe it could be a dating computer and it could basically handle all my knockbacks. <laughs> <laughs> and just give it the one big dump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim, I'll come to you finally. Could a supercomputer help you at any point in your life? And if so, what would it help you with? Uh, with the internet dating, maybe find somebody for me that uh, I'm not actually related to. <laughs> I know anyone here for Fife will be going, what's the problem with that? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well done, Athena and Raymond. You get two points for that. It was the mashup of the new government policies along with the stormy weather. And at the end of that round, well done to our teams because they are all square.
is so much of our news is about public opinion. So for this round, we've gone out and found some people to comment on the news. And this week, we spoke to Trisha, Kashina and Thomas from Surgeons Hall Museum in Edinburgh. So, Athena and Raymond, what story do you think that they are on about here? I'm not very keen on the TV, actually. Even if you can't make it completely free, maybe a subscription service. I do watch it regularly, I enjoy it, and I think it has a place. Uh, I think that we're talking about BBC licence fee and my mortgage, uh, <laughs> by, by extension of that conversation. Yes, the BBC licence fee. I think uh, the government are thinking of maybe finding an alternative way to fund the BBC if they want to continue funding it at all. It is the news that the BBC licence fee could be on the way out, with critics suggesting it's past its sell-by date and should be replaced by a subscription model. The BBC has always argued that its programmes are value for money. I mean, look at today's recording in Edinburgh. <laughs> I have to say that tickets were free for this one, although we were under pressure from Underbelly to charge at least five quid a head. <laughs> Raymond, what about it then? Obviously, the arguments come back year after year, and now with the success of Netflix and Amazon Prime, people are saying, should the BBC be a subscription service? And should the licence fee as a model be scrapped? Our family never had a TV. I'm for Easter House. We never had a TV licence. You remember in the 70s that wee mad van would come round? <laughs> the, the van, like a spectre of death, right? And, and my dad would clock the van, right? He would go, here's the TV detector van. And for some mad reason, and we stayed one up, he went, he'd pulled a plug out the wall <laughs> as if it was somehow connected to the van. <laughs> and then he'd go, right, everybody, doing in a flare, don't make a sound. <laughs> What do you think, Jay? Is the BBC value for money or should the licence fee be got rid of and a new system put in place? Why do I feel like this question's a test? Yes. <laughs> it's like being round my mother-in-law's house and being asked how I feel about family holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the BBC are, by the way, in the middle of a cost-cutting uh, process, so much so the next David Attenborough documentary is just about Blair Drum and Safari Park. <laughs> Some crackpot in the national press that says that because of the way it's funded, that there's a, you know, a kind of culture of excess. Well, I tell you what, clearly the guy's never been on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the BBC Scotland channel, which are clearly redressing that issue. <laughs> With gusto. <laughs> Carrying on for Raymond's point, because I was on last series, it was great, and it, got the, it was on the telly as well, so we got backstage, we got baguettes and crepes <laughs> and pancakes, and I got my shirt ironed for me. <laughs> the day I was lucky if I got a jam piece, man. <laughs> I think it has uses too, because instead of that point system for that uh, immigration, they should just, when you come off the plane at Heathrow, you should sit and watch a, an episode of Only Connect. <laughs> and, and even if they got one question right, you should be allowed in. <laughs> you might also be aware that the BBC has made some changes at the top level. We've got the Director General, Tony Hall, who's stepping down. Uh, here in Scotland, Director of BBC Scotland, Donaldo McKinnon, has announced that she is to step down from her position uh, as our boss. She's denied that she's demob happy, but has said that we can bring in games for home until she leaves. <laughs> Yeah, the BBC licence fee is the correct answer. Two points go to Athena and Raymond. Now to you, Jim and Jay. Here's Trisha, Kashina and Thomas. What are they talking about here? I have seen a lot of programmes on TV about it and they all look fake. I can't imagine it working or being particularly very effective. Each to their own and if it works for them, then good luck to her. I hear from friends that it's a tough process, so I don't think in this moment you care about fashionable things. Uh, so I think they're chatting about Kate Middleton because Princess Kate has been telling everybody about her hypnobirthing plan. So she gave birth to her three children through hypnobirthing, which if you don't know, is drug-free birthing, uh, where you light candles and chant and pray. <laughs> Uh, and, I mean, somebody, I just, I, as you know, Des, I just had a, a wee baby 15 weeks ago. Hey. Yeah. 
and I, I did, I decided, to, I did hypnobirth. I was going to ask, did you hypnobirth? I did hypnobirth because, uh, so the, so my pregnancy, I'm 38 years old, uh, what is known as a geriatric mother, and they say that to your face. <laughs> 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 and we did an IVF birth because you don't get pregnant at 38 without a lot of help, especially when your man's a massive stoner. So... <laughs> <laughs> I tell you the worst thing about hypnobirthing is, as a first-time pregnant person, is explaining it to women who have actually given birth and then wonder why they can't stop laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> My pals were all saying things like, so instead of taking pain-killing drugs, you're going to chant affirmations and visualise a flower opening. <laughs> <My eye. laughs> Is that really what you, you didn't have an epidural or anything like that? No, I did it drug-free uh, 42 hours, Raymond. No even any gas. No, I did, get, I did do some gas in there, but ah, that doesn't really geez, count. got you. <laughs> <laughs> That gas right. gets you mad. When was the last time that you pushed something at the end? Hey, have a Don't, you, hey. don't ask him that. Do not. Hey. <laughs> don't have a that. few nights on the Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. The voice of experience, Jay, and you've absolutely nailed the right answer. Hypnobirthing is right. Kate Middleton confirmed she used hypnobirthing to stay calm during labour, which really helped because it was Prince Philip that drove her to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what about this phenomenon of hypnobirthing? Is it something you're going to introduce on the farm? Uh, <laughs> my girlfriend, Morag, is actually uh, going to have a baby in July, so I'm going to be a father. So I was oh. getting... So, aye, aye. <laughs> uh, aye, the ball has been working. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it's so, great news, Jim. That's so, brilliant, mate. It's a whole new experience for me. So, so open to anything that's going to help more I get through the birth. Hopefully it won't be 42 hours. No. Athena, what about you? Were you a hypnobirther? No, I didn't. I, it just seemed like, it, like I couldn't imagine it working. And in the end, I, when I had my child, I had every intervention going. Um, not as it happens because I needed it, but I just thought, whilst I'm here, yeah. I might... <laughs> It's not often you get the NHS saying, we want to make you as high as a kite, um, and it's all totally cool. I'll come to you, Raymond. Uh, were you on drugs when your kids were born? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just sobered up, and the, one of them had left school. <laughs> Uh, Kay Middleton revealed that she turned to hypnobirthing in response to the intense feeling of nausea she felt every morning at breakfast when Prince Andrew showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, hypnobirthing is the correct answer. And two points go to Jim and Jay. <laughs> This round is all about who's in the news. I'll play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So, Jim and Jay, you're first this time. Who is this? The inside of my thighs felt like the, the rough end of a scouring pad. <laughs> it's uh, Scotland's very own Lewis Capaldi, who cleaned up at the Brits there on the, the other night. Aye, Tuesday, I think it was. Big, big fan of the Brits then, yeah? Watched it. Uh, Start to finish? Yeah, no. No, I didn't. <laughs> Well done, mate. Right answer. That is Lewis Capaldi, who was in the news this week after his success. At the Brit Awards, he picked up two gongs for Best Newcomer and for Best Song. The Bathgate boy was there in all his glory, taken up to the stage, swigging from a bottle of Buckfast. <laughs> there you go. This year's Brits had a TV audience of 2.5 million. That's half a million teenagers plus 2 million parents constantly saying, I've never heard of them. <laughs> When's Rod Stewart coming on the scene again? So, Lewis Capaldi taking up the bottle of Buckfast whilst he's getting his Brit Award, do you think it was about a banter? Or, as some have said, oh, he's just reinforcing that stereotype. What do you think, Jay? I mean, Lewis Capaldi's a walking stereotype, really, isn't he? He's, like, he's your best friend's weird big brother who was really into Star Trek. <laughs> but you would still snog him if you never got a lumber at the party. That's not really... <laughs> What did you think of him then getting up with a bottle of Bucky? It didn't bother me in the slightest. I, I mean, I, I never knew about it until you'd mentioned it there. I never saw it. <laughs> I don't you know, watch the Brits, no? 
Do I watch the Brits? I <laughs> can't have, have no bought TV life. <laughs> I heard about it. <laughs> Athena, what about you? Obviously, Lewis Capaldi, you now a bit of a legend in Scotland. I don't think the Buckfast thing kind of reinforced a stereotype because a lot of people in that venue didn't know what it was. They were like, oh my God, this Scottish Prosecco. It looks, a <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> what is this? Yes. We didn't know you, you made Carver up in Scotland. They had no idea. So look, when you go, when you go somewhere like that, you're not, you, you know, you've got to take a bit of yourself with you. And I was like, I'm all for it, you know. When I get to that stage, I'm taking my case either. So I love him. And is that that super him. strong stuff? Super strong, yeah. Oh, we've, we've put the price of that right up. I, <laughs> I myself have had to switch to an ultimate brand. <laughs> <laughs> For economic reasons. <laughs> I, on the kind of Buckfast thing, someone, I remember being at a party when I was about 18 or 19 and someone told me that if you, if you mixed milk with Buckfast, then it tasted just like Bailey's. <laughs> they lied. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what about you, Jimmy? You're a Lewis Capaldi fan? Lewis, just a, an ordinary boy. Yeah. If he bathgate. You know, because there's a UFO a theory about uh, kind of like Falkirk and bathgate and all that kind of bit. So uh, I think because Capaldi and, uh, and Susan Boyle's voice, you know, it's kind of <laughs> outer world. You know, it's not what you expect from that kind of area. So yeah. maybe there's something going on. Maybe an alien came down and pumped someone. I don't, I don't know. But... <laughs> Giving us this gift. Nice. And at least he is, you know, sticking to his guns and not forgetting his roots. He's not like Sheena Easton, who left. Was it East Call Bride? She left. And then she was for Bells Hill. Bells Hill. Because my mate used to clean her windies. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a euphemism. He was... Uh, also at the Brits, rapper Dave won the award for Album of the Year. It's been a big week for Dave, as he also won Employee of the Month at Coatbridge Garden Centre. <laughs> Thinking about it, that might have been a different Dave, but he's getting the credit. Chaz must be really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two points to Jim and Jay. That was Lewis Capaldi. To you now, Athena and Raymond, it's your turn. Who is this and why are they in the news? The three of us pixies did all our bits together, but we never saw Angelina again. Is this Imelda Staunton mouthing off about noises, noises? In cinemas, In specifically. Cinemas. Yeah, that's yeah. the news that actress Imelda Staunton has thrown her weight behind the anti-scrunch movement, claiming she's prepared to slap down any crisp munchers and noisy eaters in the audience. Uh, the actress will play the queen in the fifth series of The Crown, which is the one where everybody either gets divorced, arrested, or moves to Canada. <laughs> so what do you think then, Athena, about Imelda Staunton and cracking down on people that make noises? It's part of the ambience, I think. <laughs> Why go to the cinema and sit in silence? Stay at home. The cinema's really loud. Mm. Like, it's not as loud as my chewing. <laughs> Last time I checked, Dolby <laughs> isn't louder than me going munch munch. Um, so she, she needs to chill out a little bit, I think. Raymond, what about you? Cinematic experience, do you think people that eat crisps and make noise spoil it? I, I've never keen and noticed. I mean, I tend to go with a carry out and a rotisserie chicken myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I can see how... I, I, mean, I, I think that's right. I mean, it's that loud, man. Mm. And there's leather seats, and I, I mean, I farted, nobody heard it. <laughs> and they went, his rotisserie chicken stinking. <laughs> but... So has Amelda Staunton got a point then of people eating noisily in cinemas? Does it ruin the experience? No, I thought can do what they want, because it's a fortune, a bloody fortune, to go to the cinema anyway. So if you're paying for that experience, you should be able to, you know, the pick and mix is good. It costs more than tickets. You know, oh, oh my, not big tub. Pink uh, mix is, and you go about mad, do you? £25 pound or something. I know, if you need to phone your broker. <laughs> I'm usually... about mad, there's at least 300 grams here. <laughs> I need to remortgage the house. Do you, what about you? Do you have any sympathy for this view that people making noise in the cinema spoils it? <laughs> There's more annoying things about audiences. Like I, I recently took my niece to see uh, Sing Along a Frozen 2, um, and none of them sang. I was raging. I was getting up and conducting them. I mean, I know she's 22, but I bought the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> 
I went to see Cats at the cinema. I had to ask people beside me to speak up, as I could still hear the dialogue. <laughs> Imelda Staunton is the right answer. Two points go to Athena and Raymond! <laughs> For a final quick fire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. I'll read out the headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. So get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. I feel happy. I'm so happy. There we go. It's Stormzy reacting to winning at this year's Brit Awards just after he'd swigged for Lewis Capaldi's Buckfast bottle. <laughs> all right, let's go, fingers and buzzers. Here we go. Three and four Brits have never found what? The way to Amarillo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three and four Brits have never found what? What Bono was looking for. <laughs> three and four... Three and four Brits have never found what? A referendum result they're happy with. <laughs> three and four Brits have never found what? The point of golf. <laughs> <laughs> Three and four Brits have never found what? Wally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three and four Brits have never found what? I oh. Their bins after Storm Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is three and four Brits have never found love on dating apps. What was found after 47 years in a forest in Finland? The winner of a How Long Can You Stay in a Sauna contest. <laughs> <laughs> what was found after 47 years in a forest in Finland? What Bono was looking for. <laughs> what was found after 47 years in a forest in Finland? The blonde lassie for ABBA. <laughs> <coughs> uh, what was found after 47 years in a forest in Finland? Sherga. Sherga. <laughs> <laughs> what was found after 47 years in a forest in Finland? A portal where every sock we've ever lost has been transported to. What was found after 47 years in a forest in Finland? I, I think it was a wedding ring. It's the right answer, yeah. It was a wedding ring lost in the USA in Maine and it was found 47 years later in a forest in Finland. So well done, Jay. That is the right answer. I feel happy. I'm so happy. Oh, there's a klaxon. That means that Stormzy has blown. And at the end of the quiz, our winners this week are Jim Smith and Jay Lafferty. Yeah. Congratulations to our runners up, Athena Kuglenu and Raymond Dale. Yeah. And we'll leave you with the breaking the news. Breaking news, Justin. Disney is launching a range of wedding dresses based on the designs of outfits worn by its on screen princesses. Prices go as high as $10,000, which is a lot when you consider one of them's made of rags and only comes with one shoe. <laughs> A YouTuber staged a fake trip to Bali by having a photo shoot in Ikea. Influencer Natalia Taylor had already faked a trip to the depths of hell by having a photo shoot in the Paisley branch of TK Maxx. <laughs> and the drinkers do end up looking at people through beer goggles and the effect kicks in after just a few drinks scientists have found before they finished the wine, abandoned the study and started getting off with each other. <laughs> The news is broken. I've been Des Clark. Goodbye. Brazil. Brazil.